God. Sex. And low-cut filters. Three topics of conversation that you've got to sort of tiptoe around really carefully so as not to annoy people. And you see, my thing is, I'm not so into high-pass filters. The low-cut filters. They're not that great. They can cause all kinds of problems with transients, with your mid-range and high frequencies. And when I say that to people, oftentimes they sort of curl up in the fetal position on the floor and start crying, saying, oh, but I read this and I heard that and so-and-so's a massive engineer or so-and-so's a big DJ or whoever said you've got to do this on every channel that's not your kick or every channel that's not your bass or whatever it doesn't stand up to scrutiny this is not just my opinion i'm going to show you exactly what i'm talking about with numbers numbers don't lie let's have a look you'll see what i mean let's go let's go way of the eq chameleon right let's bust some myths because I feel passionate about this subject. Seriously. Myth number one. Oh, I've got to use the low cut filters to free up headroom. Yeah, I've got to use the high pass filters to clear up some headroom in the mix. Look, I understand. Low frequencies take up more space than high frequencies. This is a given. So if you've got a sound that has low frequencies and also has high frequencies, then it's fair to assume that cutting the low frequencies will free up some space in the mix. But the there's one small problem. That doesn't work. This should be pretty simple. Here's a piano line that I just played in on the keyboard. Didn't think much about it. It goes like this. Nothing fancy, nothing special, it's just a piano loop. Now, looking at the channel for this piano, we can see that the peak level of that loop is minus 1.3 decibels. In fact, I'll reset that just so that you can see that there's no funny business here. Let me play it again and you'll see it's minus 1.3 every time I play it. Okay, well actually it's minus 1.6 decibels, but it's minus 1.3 decibels whenever it loops. See what I mean? So yeah, as long as it loops, it gets to minus 1.3 decibels. Look, I'm making this up as I go along. This is just a thrown together example. This is not me being sneaky. It's just a normal piano loop. Okay, so I'll reset that again. And I'm going to add an EQ plugin. Just a standard popular EQ plugin. This is all I've got on the channel. Let's have a look. Make sure that our level is minus 1.3. Right, I'm satisfied with that. The plugin actually puts the level at minus 1.2. So obviously there's a sort of rounding margin of error, but okay, that doesn't really matter. Now let's see what happens when we engage the high pass filter. That's interesting. Let's reset those meters once more. Let's try that again. I'm not making this up, right? The meters are showing minus 0.1 decibels, and it was doing that without even looping. So we've gone from minus 1.6 decibels. We've basically lost a decibel and a half of headroom. And this filter is at 13.536 hertz. Let's see what happens if we slide that up. Right, now I'm on 22.181 hertz and it's clipping. I've lost two decibels of headroom by just low cutting. Myth number two. Oh, but if I don't high pass my hi-hats, then I won't have space for my bass sounds and my kick drum. I make hip hop and EDM and bass music and I need lots and lots of space for my kick drum and my bass, my sub bass. That is like saying, guys, we've got to clear the runway for this jumbo jet, right? Make sure the runway is absolutely clear so that that plane's got plenty of space to pick up speed and take off. Whoa, 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 guys, guys, guys. There's an eyelash on the runway. The plane can't take off if there's an eyelash on the runway. That's going to slow down the plane and then it won't be able to pick up enough speed and it won't be able to take off. The point I'm making is that it's all about scale. If you've got a sound, look, I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show, I can't be, whenever I tell people this, they don't believe me. So let me show you. This is just something I've knocked up for the purposes of example. It's not a real project, but I've 
intentionally engineered it to make my point. So I started with this breakbeat. And if you look at the channel, you can see there's plenty of low end on there. And what I've done is boosted the low end with an EQ. 30 decibels, why not? Just to prove that I can. And the point I'm making here is that you can have excessive lows on pretty much any element in the mix that isn't kick and bass. And as long as your kick and bass are strong enough, those excessive low frequencies on all the other instruments will have zero impact or minimal impact or might even have a positive impact on the sound of the kick and bass. So let's move on to the kick drum. That was the next thing I added. If you ask me, it sounds just as good with the loop on. There's no side chaining or ducking or anything fancy. It's just a kick drum and a break beat. Then I've added this snare. And that's got plenty of low end boost as well. 30 dB at 100 Hertz, that's a shelf. Why not? Let's just see how far we can go. So I've added this clap sample and this has a 30 decibel boost at 255 hertz. Again, you can see on the frequency analyzer there is content there. So I am boosting needless low frequencies. And I'm not saying it sounds better like that. I'm not going to get into that. My point is I don't need to cut it. It's not going to have any effect whatsoever on the kick drum or the bass. I've boosted this so much it's clipping. Don't care. Now for this offbeat hi-hat, I deliberately chose a sound with loads of low frequency energy. And again, I've boosted that 30 decibels at about 100 hertz. It's absolutely ridiculous. I would never do that normally, but I also wouldn't cut. And people say, oh no, you've got to cut it. There'll be no space for your kick and bass. It's nonsense. And I have a bass sound and I haven't boosted this because this is part of the examples. So we have kick and bass. They sound together like this. So the question, why don't all the elements with the boosted low end destroy the kick and bass? And the answer is because even if I give 30 decibels of boost in those low frequencies, okay, again, it doesn't sound great. I'm not saying that boosting the low end like that is a good idea necessarily. Maybe sometimes it is, but the point is it doesn't harm the kick and the bass because they're just too big. It's like a fly versus a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not going to do any more metaphors. You get the idea. And to be absolutely clear, here's what this little sketch sounds like with the kick and bass muted. And you can see from the frequency analyzer here that there's plenty of low frequency information. And here's the little sketch again, just the kick and bass in solo. They're at least reaching minus three decibels on the spectrum analyzer. Now, that's a bit of a funny metric because if you use a different spectrum analyzer or slightly different settings, you might get a different readout. But the point is, I know that to be a very loud point. Now, when we put everything together, the kick and bass will still be reaching about minus three decibels in that low region, even though they're competing with all the other things in there with the massive boosts in the low end. As I say, because they're just so big, they don't care. <laughs> That's it, see, there's headroom. It can be done, it's not a big deal. Anyone who tells you that can't be done is wrong. It's as simple as that, they're just flat wrong. Myth number three. Uh, well, it's just to be safe. I'm just gonna high pass everything, just in case there's low frequencies there that we can't hear. We don't, we don't want them in the mix, just in case, you know, just to keep safe. No, I'm not having that. For one thing, we've got visual aids now, so you can use a frequency analyzer and you can see whether or not there are low frequencies that might potentially cause a problem. Second, 
Secondly, high pass filters are not safe. They're anything but safe. First of all, high pass filters are not safe because they can actually decrease the amount of headroom left in your mix. Second of all, high pass filters are not safe because they disrupt the phase relationship between frequencies all through the mid range, all the way up into the high frequencies. High passes do damage to other frequencies and they do damage to the transients as well. I'm not going to go into super detail about that right here, right now, but I covered that in the first ever episode of the way of the eq chameleon so go and watch way of the eq chameleon part one if you want to see what that's all about myth number four uh well i just want to use low cut filters to make sure everything sounds clean and pretty okay look yeah there is a difference so up until now most of what we've talked about is using a low cut filter sort of preemptively or habitually or ritualistically or superstitiously i am totally against that kind of use of a low cut filter that's where you're introducing a low cut filter and you haven't even heard any problems in the low frequencies. That's a really unwise practice. I suppose it is slightly better if you're hearing a problem in the low frequencies and using a low cut filter. But still, still, it is much better to use a bell cut or a low shelf cut. First of all, bells and low shelves offer a lot more control, so it's much easier to home right in and deal directly with the issue that you're hearing in the low frequencies frequencies without affecting other frequencies that are outside of the range where the issue lies. And bells and low shelves naturally have much less of an impact on the phase response of the signal that you're EQing. So you will almost always get cleaner results just using a bell or a low shelf instead of using a low cut filter. And again, in case that's not totally clear, I go into way more detail about this in Way of the EQ Chameleon Part 1, Broad and Smooth. So in conclusion, using low cut filters is not an effective way to free up headroom. It is not an effective way to make sure there's space for your kick and bass, and it's not the most effective way to keep your mix clean. So the question becomes, whatever is the justification for using a high pass filter? Well, look, I'm not philosophically against using high pass filters as a blanket rule. Sometimes those things that I've talked about don't really matter that much. Sometimes it's okay to lose some headroom. Sometimes it's okay to mess up the phase response of the sound. Sometimes those things are insignificant. It is a tool that is worth having in the toolbox, but as I'm pretty sure I've demonstrated today, it's a well overrated, overused, over recommended tool. And I've certainly, certainly had people come to me saying, can you help me with this mix? The mid range doesn't sound right. The high frequencies don't sound right. And I say, take off your low cut filters. And they say, what are you talking about? That's not going to have any impact at all. I say, just try it. They try it, freeze up headroom, ironically, and it gets rid of subtle distortions in the mid-range and the high frequencies. Now I'm not saying that this is some kind of magic wand, stop low cutting and your mix is suddenly going to go from crappy to amazing, but what I am saying is don't expect that your mixes are going to go from crappy to amazing by using low cut filters and you're better off just not touching the low frequencies. Especially if you can't hear any issues, don't touch those low frequencies. They're delicate and they're important. I don't understand why there needs to be an aversion to low frequencies. Low frequencies sound nice, low frequencies feel nice it's good to have some low frequencies in your mix i know that there are mastering engineers that recommend it i know that there are big plug-in companies that recommend it i know it's in every mixing guide you might have heard it on your university course i'm sorry to say everybody's wrong about that if you disagree with me put it in the comments let's see what you've got i've come to this conclusion by really really studying both music that i think sounds fantastic really taking those apart and seeing what makes them tick and i've come to this conclusion by meticulously experimenting with plugins, experimenting with kit, experimenting with techniques. I'm all about finding the most effective ways to get the best possible sound and I am extremely serious in that endeavour. But anyway, as I've said, there are rare occasions to use a low cut filter, especially with sound design, especially with like restoration and tricky editing, not so much with mixing, but sometimes even with mixing. If you want to get top quality results, you need to be adaptive you need to be flexible hence way of the eq chameleon i'll see you next time next time you hear someone spouting off about low cut everything high pass everything do them a favor do me a favor send them to this video